Good evening, everyone. I am Tony Felker, and it is my honor to serve as president and CEO of the Frisco Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us tonight as we close out yet another election, in this case for City Council Place 3. Please remember that early voting commences next Monday, May 24th, and Election Day itself is Saturday, June 5th. Before we get into this evening's forum, though, we want to take a minute and outline how we arrived at this point in time. On May 1st, 2021, the elections for City Council took place. There were four can candidates who entered the City Council Place 3 race. Due to the fact that none of the four candidates received a majority, 50% plus one vote, of the vote in that election, the top two vote-getters headed to a runoff, those individuals being Dr. Jennifer White and Ms. Angelia Pelham. On Tuesday evening, May 4th, Christopher Lee, Director of Governmental Affairs at the Frisco Chamber, asked both candidates if they would be available for a candidate forum on the evening of Wednesday, May 19th. Ms. Pelham immediately confirmed. Dr. White said she would have to check her schedule and get back with him as soon as possible. Seven days later, Dr. White had still not confirmed. Upon follow-up by Christopher Lee, Dr. White said that the 19th would not work for her. Over the next several days, the Frisco Chamber offered many options to ensure we had both candidates available for a candidate forum. The goal was to find a time that would work for both candidates and take place prior to early voting. We offered unconventional times over a two-week window, including early in the morning, on the weekends, during the lunch hour, but Dr. White indicated none of these options fit with her schedule. Ultimately, Dr. White said she would not be able to join us for the candidate forum until after early voting was underway. At that point, the Frisco Chamber went back to the original date and time that we proposed and Ms. Bellum had agreed to, that being this evening, Wednesday, May 19th. In an effort to fulfill our mission to inform and educate our business community, we offered Dr. White the option to provide an unedited two to three minute video to be submitted no, long, no later than 4 p.m. on May 19th. Those guidelines were met. That's a quick summary of how we got here. Now, I'm gonna turn it over to Christopher Lee, our Director of Governmental Affairs, to take us forward from here. Christopher? Good evening. We're back. We're here. Uh, we're doing this all over again. Um, I want to go ahead and thank Ms. Angelia Pelham for joining us here this evening. Um, we're going to go ahead and kind of dive into our form and go ahead and get ready for the evening. Um, so to start things off, we're going to go ahead and play the video that Tony mentioned earlier um, from Dr. White, and we'll start with that. From there, we'll go ahead and roll on into the rest of the form. So um, Shelby, our tech guru, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit uh, play on that whenever you're ready. Good evening. My name is Dr. Jennifer White, and I'm running for Frisco City Council Place 3. First off, I'd like to sincerely thank the Frisco Chamber of Commerce for the opportunity to share this video and my vision for the City of Frisco. Unfortunately, I am unable to join you in person tonight as I have a scheduling conflict with my work as a local veterinarian. I love Frisco, and it is the best city in America. I am answering the call to serve and help Frisco become an even better place to live, work, raise a family, and start a business. My campaign has knocked on nearly 15,000 doors, and I continually hear the same concerns from our residents. It is clear that Frisco residents care about four main things, and my priorities are your priorities. Number one is lowering the tax burden on our hardworking residents, which includes increasing our homestead exemption without sacrificing the financial commitment to our first responders. We need to work even harder to attract the right businesses to generate more sales tax revenue so that we can shift some of that burden off of our residents. In analyzing our previous budgets, it's quite interesting that in the last 10 years, Frisco has increased the personnel of our police force by 65% and fire personnel by 73%. In that same 10 year span, we have increased the personnel at Frisco Athletic Center by 74%. That math just doesn't add up. 
We need to focus on the core functions of government and the city of Frisco should not be in the gym business. Number two, reducing density and apartments and protecting our suburban heritage. I will lead the fight to prevent Frisco from becoming like Dallas. Number three, fully supporting our brave public safety officials. I'm so proud to announce that I have been endorsed by the Frisco Firefighters Association and I will never vote to defund the police. Our first responders know that I will always have their back. Number four is protecting Frisco family values. Let me address a few of the things being spread by my opponent. The first is that I am for higher taxes and spending. This is blatantly false and ridiculous. I am the candidate that will stand for lower taxes. The second is that I am for an expensive pet shelter in Frisco. I've always maintained that we need a pet shelter. However, the numbers stated at the winter work session involve a pet shelter for $10 million. My plan is to have a pet shelter in Frisco that is a fraction of the cost by repurposing an existing building that is not only good for our taxpayers, but also our pets. In closing, I believe that I am the right candidate at the right time to help lead Frisco into the future. I'm not a politician and represent a true outsider. I will listen to our residents and be a voice of the people. I appreciate your consideration and ask for your vote in the June 5th runoff election. Thank you and may God bless your family. years ago. I was a corporate relocation with the PepsiCo organization. Since coming to the, the city of Frisco, I have had an opportunity to contribute in a number of ways in our community. The first, my husband and I planted a church about 13 years ago in downtown Frisco. It's in the old Abbey restaurant. You see it at the intersection of 7th and Main. And about 11 years ago, I started a nonprofit called Linking Cultures of Frisco, which was an incredible opportunity to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and to offer an oration competition that has now awarded almost $60,000 in scholarships. In addition, I have continued to grow my career as a corporate executive. For the past 30 years, I have worked at organizations such as the Walt Disney World Company, PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, Cinemark, and Dave & Buster's. I've held positions such as Vice President, as well as Executive Vice President and Chief HR Officer. It is with that community service and those 30 years of corporate experience that I now come to the table wanting to be a part of the growth and the next chapter of Frisco. So that's why I'm here. I love this city and I wanna be able to contribute to this next chapter of our city's growth. My priorities are simple. It's public safety, that's priority one continuing to focus on ensuring that the citizens of Frisco are safe in their homes, in their workplaces, in their schools, and ensuring that we have the right number of personnel, technology, and training for our public servants. Two, balanced economic growth, ensuring that we are continuing to diversify our tax base so that we can shift the burden from our residents to our corporate citizens. And then three, ensuring that the diverse richness in our city 
is able to thrive and we are able to celebrate all of the wonderful citizens that we have in our city and everyone feels as though they have a voice in the direction of the city. Thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to, to hearing and talking more about the direction of Frisco with my friend Chris here. Thank you for that. Um, I do want to go back for just a, probably about a minute and a half. Um, we had a slight technical glitch at the very beginning. So if you want to do your introductory right, right up until you started talking about your experience, um, if you want to just have probably about a minute to do that again, I apologize. We had a slight technical glitch. So um, if you don't mind doing that just one more time, just okay. so everybody at home can, can hear what you had to say. Awesome. So this is take two, <laughs> just in case you missed the first part. But as I shared earlier, eight months ago when I started my campaign, I thought I was just running for place three. But I have come to realize that I am not just running for a seat. I am running for the culture of this city. I'm running for the economic prosperity of this city and I'm running for the unification of all of our residents, regardless of partisanship. That's why I'm running. That's why I need your vote. My husband and I and my daughter moved here 17 years ago as a product of a corporate relocation, and we've contributed to the city in a number of ways. As I mentioned, we launched a church back in 2008. We now are inhabiting the old Abbey restaurant downtown at the intersection of 7th and Main. And then 11 years ago, I launched a nonprofit, Linking Cultures of Frisco, which focuses on honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King and has awarded almost $60,000 in scholarships to students who have competed in an oration competition. And then I spent the past 30 years in corporate at the Walt Disney World Company, Pepsi, Frito-Lay, and Cinemark in roles such as Vice President of Human Resources, all the way to Chief HR Officer and Executive Vice President. It's with that experience, as well as my commitment to this community, that I now seek to serve you on our city council. Thank you. Perfect, I think you hit that uh, right on the mark. I think if uh, my tech guru over there is identifying that we, we got it all we covered. Got it. So we got, Good. I believe you got your whole three minutes in there. So um, thank you again for working with us on that slight technical That's glitch. Okay. Um, so as we heard earlier um, in the video from your opponent, um, she, she made some references to you directly. So I want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and respond to that with our first question. So this is my first question to you. What is your response to Dr. White in, in her video? Well, I'm going to shift my focus to the camera because I'm hoping that Dr. White is actually watching. Dr. White, one of the very first lessons I learned from my mother was the first act of courage is to simply show up. You did not show up. You failed the citizens of Frisco. You said you would fight on behalf of the residents of Frisco. How on earth are the residents of Frisco expecting you to fight for them and have a conversation and be able to defend issues with five council members and a mayor when you fail to show up to debate me? It's an act of cowardice. You should have been here and you failed the citizens of Frisco. Okay, thank you for your response. Um, we're going to go ahead and change it up just a little bit <laughs> and talk about some things that we mentioned that you mentioned in our previous candidate form. So one of the things that came up in a previous candidate form, um, hopefully we have a little bit of fun with this. I feel like it has been a little, a little heavy start to all of this. So we'll go ahead and yeah, just let's it up. Ha have a little bit of fun with this one. So um, we talked about a trolley last time. I think Tony mentioned it, he wanted it to be named Tony's Trolley if it came to, <laughs> came to be. So um, since we relegated him to timekeeper, he's looking for something to hold on to. Yeah. But um, you mentioned a trolley. and kind of promoting tourism. Um, what, if that were to come to fruition, what would kind of be the plan for the budget on this program and how would you pay for ongoing expenses? You know, Chris, you know, one of the things that I've shared with Mayor Cheney and a number of council members is I think we, we are a shining star when it comes to being, you know, an attractive city. And I think that we could command a little bit more swagger than sometimes we actually do. I think that there are a number of private partnerships who would jump at the chance to partner with this city to launch a, it could be a trolley, it could be an open air bus, a London style bus, I mean it could be any form of really creative um, mobilization that can take citizens and residents and tourists from one part of the city to the next. And so I, I really think that when it comes to spending for this particular idea, this is more of a revenue generator than an expense because I think we could really have a strong partnership when, with one of our private partners to do this. Okay. 
Um, well, in, in talking about tourism, and earlier you mentioned kind of the culture of the city, um, I, I think you're kind of I identifying some of those cultures. If you could just speak for maybe a minute on what you see is the culture of Frisco and kind of what, what is the shining example that you see is the culture of Frisco? I love the culture of Frisco, and, I, and I'll tell you why I say that. Uh, I have worked for several iconic brands. When people think of Walt Disney World and they think of PepsiCo, they think of these very defined brands, and they have very positive emotions when they think of those brands. I would put Frisco right up there with those brands. Uh, when I think of Frisco, first of all, I think of a place that is economically vibrant and diversified. I think of a city where uh, there is strong unification of a diverse resident base. Uh, I think of a city where there's lots of innovation and we're always looking to that next idea. We're always looking around the corner. That's how I define Frisco and that's a part of why I'm attracted to wanting to help lead this city. I, I love it and I think it's probably, it truly is one of the best places to live, not only in the United States, but I would say in the world. I think there's a lot of people here that would uh, agree with you on that. Yeah. So. Um, we're going to kind of dive into the, the tax conversation. I think in our last candidate forum, I don't remember who mentioned it, but somebody said that Frisco didn't have the lowest tax rate in the area, and I, I went back and fact-checked that, and I'm pretty sure we are, we are the lowest, if not the second lowest, in the North Texas region when it comes to our taxes. And so um, when, when it comes to lowering our taxes or, or handling taxes in the city, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier in talking about economic development, uh, what would be your plan to kind of tackle that homestead exemption or lowering our taxes or lowering that tax burden on our citizens? What would be your plan specifically for that? Yeah, and, and, you're, and you're right, Chris. We are one of the lowest um, tax rates in this area. I think Flower Mound is probably the only other city that's lower than we are. Um, so we absolutely have the lowest tax rate. Um, I will tell you that the way we start to tackle the burden of taxes on our residents is continuing to grow our corporate citizen base. That's really how you basically shift the burden from the residents to our corporate citizens. So continuing to bring in organizations such as the PGA and we have the link coming. In fact, I think uh, Mayor Cheney said that, you know, the link property, which is a billion dollar property that's, uh, that's about to, to go up here in our Northwest qu uh, quadrant. Uh, is going to generate about $10 million in ad valorem and sales tax. So the way you shift that burden clearly is by bringing in these corporate citizens who can bear the brunt of this ad valorem tax and ensure that we now can afford this homestead exemption, which is a part of my platform. I joined John Keating um, in focusing on increasing homestead exemption from 10% to 20%. The way you can afford that is to bring in these corporate citizens. Well, I, I think you might have skipped ahead of me here because I was about to ask you about the link development uh, from last night. And um, I think Mayor Cheney called it the, the one final piece of the puzzle when it comes to the area that surrounds the PGA yeah. and that whole development. Um, I was in that council meeting last night and there was a lot of conversation um, from council members regarding that development project. And some of the concerns that um, were, were, I think, addressed, um, and I want to hear your perspective on this, was about density. Um, yep. th they lowered, I believe it was about a third from the original plan to what was yep. approved last night. There was a third of the residential units that were removed from that project. So can you share with us your thoughts on that for about a minute? Well, first of all, I am thrilled with that project. Um, it is probably uh, one of the most um, expensive pieces of property um, that we have in the city. It's got unobstructed views of uh, both of the 18 hole golf uh, courses. Um, so it's an amazing piece of property and I think we are developing it uh, very smart with the mixed use strategy that we have and you're right, we have reduced the number of multifamily units by 30%. And we really started with this strategy uh, about five or six years ago as we really wanted to conquer this whole density issue. And I think we're seeing it play out here in the link. I mean, there's kind of three steps to reducing density that we've adopted over the past five or six years. The first one is really ensuring that we have a greater amount of green space going from seven to 10% green space. The second piece is ensuring that we have 55 units per acre and we have far less as you've uh, alluded to here. And then the third is phasing, and we have this concept called earn up. And so for a developer, in order to be able to build one multifamily unit, you have to build out a thousand square feet of commercial space. So I think we're doing a very smart job uh, in ensuring that we don't have a densely populated area, and I'm excited about the link. Awesome. Um, okay, well, we talked about the link, we talked about tourism, we talked about a lot of those things, and this is some, a conversation that 
myself through kind of public policy and what I follow here at the Chamber as the Director of Government Affairs, I'm starting to hear a little bit more of as time goes on, and that's how do we get the employees for all of these tourism-based businesses and things that are moving here, how do we get them to live in the area? Affordable housing is probably one way to sum that up. Well, we've got all these developments that are coming in, but how can we get our workers to actually enjoy the same things that our residents do? Can yeah. you speak to that? Yeah. You know, and, and that's, a, that's a question that I get a lot around affordable uh, housing. What I will tell you is, you know, first of all, my opponent um, has constantly said no when it comes to multifamily. Well, you know, when you're bringing in new employees to a, the, into a city that are brand new in their careers with a company, they need some place to live. And so these multifamily options are um, great for them. Uh, one of the stats that I've seen recently is that uh, our millennial population has grown by 9%. We are the sixth most desirable city for millennials. They're coming to the city, they need a place to live and multifamily is an option for them. Um, when you think about uh, my daughter, for example, is going off to college, my hope is that she will return to this city. She's gonna need a multifamily opportunity when she moves back to the city. So I think that when we think about multifamily, we need to think more broadly and think about how do we attract these employees who are coming with these organizations. And the way you do that is you offer them a nice multifamily op options. And, and so that's why I'm excited about the multifamily options that we have available. Awesome, thank you. Um, well, I've run through most of my questions, so um, I'm gonna ask you kind of a fun question. What's your favorite place to eat in Frisco? Frisco place, what's your favorite Frisco place to eat? So Rod's gonna be excited about this, um, but uh, Testa is my absolute favorite, and um, the Rosettis, I think I probably eat about three times a week, um, so I, I would have to say Testa by far is, is my favorite. Pizzeria Testa right over yes, here on Frisco right, Square. Yes, right over in Frisco Square. It is quite a delicious pizza, so I, I will maybe agree with you on that one. There's a lot of good food here in Frisco. So You have to try the Rosettis, though. I mean, okay. the pizza is phenomenal, but the All little right. spicy Rosettis are phenomenal. I'll put that on my list next time I go yep. there, so I appreciate that. Um, well, I think I have gone through most of my questions. Um, I'd love for you to ask your opponent a question. Unfortunately, we can't do that this evening. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just move to our, our closing remarks, if that's all right with you. Yep. Um, if you wanna go ahead, um, I believe we said you had two minutes um, for your closing remarks. So if you wanna go ahead and do your closing remarks, that's all on you. Awesome. Well, Frisco, thanks for joining in today. And hopefully you have gotten an opportunity to hear a little bit about how I think. Unfortunately, you didn't get that opportunity to hear that from my opponent. What I will tell you is my running, this is bigger than me. It really is. As you heard me say in the opening, this is about the culture and the economic prosperity and the unification of our city. This is bigger than me. I invite you, in fact, I would compel you to get out to the polls. Do not sit this one out. Our culture is at stake. I am a leader who values people over partisanship. I am a leader who values economic prosperity over financial stagnation. And I'm a leader who values unity over partisan polarization. That's what our city needs. That's the kind of culture we have. And that's the kind of culture I'm fighting to maintain. Come out, be a part, do not sit this one out. There is too much at stake. I look forward to seeing you at the polls. Early voting is May 24th through June 1st, and election day is June 5th. Come out and we'll see you at the polls. Thank you. Vote Angelia Pelham for Frisco City Council Place 3. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, you took the words out of my mouth. Early voting starts May 24th, Election Day, June 5th. Head to the polls. We want, as the Chamber of Commerce, we want to encourage everybody to go vote. We hope tonight was an opportunity for you to inform and educate yourself on the candidates in our um, runoff election in Frisco. So please go vote. Um, we have a little bit more information on our website, friscochamber.com slash vote. Um, so shameless plug if you want to go check that out. Um, and as far as we're concerned here, I think we're gonna go ahead and sign off for the evening. Um, we wanna thank everybody who joined us this evening um, and we look forward to having everybody back um, when we do this all over again in our next election cycle um, about a year from now, well, a little bit less than a year from now. So um, until then, my name's Chris. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>